What is up people and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Viper Commandos Warbond. Am I a little bit late? Yes, but better late than never. Now normally I'd make individual videos on weapons, armor, etc. But because this is so late and the fact that it's a smaller Warbond, I'm going to lump it all into the one video, so let's get into it. First up, we have the AR-23A Liberator Carbine. This is on page 1 of the Warbond and it costs 20 medals. For stats then, it does 60 damage, has a capacity of 45 recoil of 26 and a fire rate of 920 and its weapon traits are light armor penetrating. In terms of what this weapon comes with, it has 7 magazines and each one holds 45 rounds. It also has a flashlight slash laser combo and an automatic, semi-automatic and burst fire mode. So with all of that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. The first pro for the Liberator Carbine is weapon ergonomics. You can whip this thing around super easy which is nice when you're most likely going to be dealing with multiple enemies at closer range. After that then we have the fire rate which is so insanely high you'll be able to mag dump a terminate before you can say I hate bugs. But this fire rate is also involved in our first con in combination with the mag size. With a fire rate of 920 and a recoil of 26, more bullets can miss rather than hit if you're not careful. I'm going to say that this weapon being a liberator variant is also a con as I know many people deem it to be lazy or repetitive with 4 out of 6 assault rifles currently being a liberator variant. In conclusion, the Liberator Carbine kind of reminds me of the Adjudicator when that first came out. It's a gun with an identity crisis. It has the fire rate that one would associate with an SMG, but lacks the ammo capacity respective to that, as well as the trait that would allow it to be wielded with one hand. It also has the usual light armor pen, which I don't feel like expanding on, but if I were to change something about this weapon, I'd like to see a reduction in recoil or preferably an increase in magazine size. Next, we have the SG-22 Bushwhacker. This is on page 2 of the War Bond and it costs 50 medals. For stats, it's got damage of 405, capacity of 3, recoil of 170 and a fire rate of 650 and for weapon traits, it's light armor penetrating and one handed. And in terms of what this weapon comes with, it has 30 shells and can hold up to 3 at one time and it has a semi-automatic as well as an all barrels firing mode. The first pro is the damage. The Bushwhacker does 450 damage which is the same as the Punisher provided that all of your pellets hit their target of course and on top of that you can fire from all three barrels at the same time and while granted it's very hard to land all of these pellets unless you're very close to an enemy if you do so you can do up to 1350 damage in one go which is capable of beheading the likes of a brood commander in one triple shot which is sweet another pro is the ability to stagger enemies whether you're trying to outrun a brood commander or advance on a stalker's lair you can keep enemies at a safe distance and lastly we've got ammo capacity 30 shells might not seem like a lot, but once again referring to the Punisher, which has 60 shells, you've half the ammo capacity of a primary and a secondary that also does the same damage with the potential to do more, which seems more than fair to me. In conclusion, I really have no cons for the Bushwalker, in all honesty it hits every mark for me. It has excellent damage, a solid ammo capacity for a secondary, and a weapon option which allows you to fire all three barrels at once, turning it into the perfect get out of jail free card when things are looking rough. And while it may have a lot of recoil when the three barrels are fired simultaneously, there really is nothing else to fault. It's a cool secondary that's completely unique, performs well and fits the team. And now we have the K2 Throwing Knife. This is on page 3 of the War Bond and it costs 60 medals. For stats it does 250 damage, 3 penetration and has no special traits. This knife is just bleh. It's a plethora of missed opportunities and just an overall disappointment. It's one pro is that it can kill a charger with 4 knives to the leg but this by no means brings it to the same level as any of the other throwables, so let's get into the cons. The first con is no utility. This is to be expected because it's a knife, but the fact that I can't destroy bug holes or fabric hairs when every other throwable can by the smoke and stun grenade, which have their clear uses, does set it back. This is all the more reason why I shouldn't have to talk about these next cons, but I do because they exist, so let's keep going. The knives are not reusable. What a missed opportunity. I mean is it not a given in pretty much any video game that if you have the ability to throw any sort of melee weapon, whether that be a knife, ninja star, sword or axe, you're able to pick it back up. At most you can kill 8 light armoured enemies and then you're done until you find a grenade pack or resupply. Compare this to any of the grenades which can easily kill 8 enemies if clumped together and certainly more than that if using all 4. Another questionable choice by Arrowhead is to bring out a throwing knife as well as a new armour passive in the same warbond which increases melee damage by 50% but not add the ability to melee while holding the throwing knife to do even more damage. I mean there's missed opportunities and then there's missed opportunities that scream in your face saying please don't miss me. 
I'm not sure what the reasoning is behind this. I understand I'm not a game developer, but it's something that should have been added. It has no negatives and only adds more reason to use two items in the game, being the throwing knife and the peak physique armor passive, which both need some love in my opinion. And finally, it is so inaccurate, oh my god. The first time I threw a knife, I was shocked. It's like my hell diver is an alcoholic that also has Parkinson's. The knife doesn't go far, it doesn't go fast, and it doesn't go where you throw it. In conclusion, the knife is a huge letdown. I understand it's a Rambo-esque gimmick and has some stealth capabilities, although I don't understand stealth in this game or think it's viable enough to bring that up anyway. It just doesn't have the features you would hope for. You can't pick them up, you can't increase your melee damage, and it doesn't even go where you aim. I'm not sure what happened here if the devs were so afraid that it would be OP that they made it to be like this, but if someone has the skill to nail a devastator in the head from 50 meters away in the chaos of war, then so be it. They deserve to take that enemy out of the game. A lot of wasted potential and hopefully it receives a good few changes in the future. Moving on to the booster, it is called Experimental Infusion aka Metstims. This is also on page 3 of the war bond and it cost 80 medals. There's not a lot to say here, this for me is a must pick and is definitely to be considered in the S tier category for boosters in my opinion. Not only does it increase your movement speed, it also reduces the amount of damage you take, it's amazing. It solves a problem that you can have with regular stims, in which the restoration of health and stamina is not enough to get you out of a really bad situation. With med stims that's no longer the case. You will 10 times out of 10 be able to get out of dodge and tank the extra 1 or 2 hits on the way out from enemies until you're safe. The fact that this booster has these insane benefits while having unlimited uses is simply greedy and one of the best items out of this warbond for sure. The one single con is that if you're on an orange desert planet like Chewie for example and that visual effect comes onto your screen you will not be able to see a thing, but this is the price we pay for such glorious goodness. And finally, before we move on to cosmetics, we have got the Peak Physique Armor Passive, which increases melee damage by 50% and improves weapon handling with less drag on weapon movement. These passes for me are bad than good in that order. Melee is not effective against enemies right now with no melee weapons, all the more reason why the throwing knife should have been the first one, and even with the increase in damage you can only one shot the most basic enemies and not even 100% of the time, it's just not great. The increased weapon handling however makes a massive difference, it's most notable in weapons that have poor ergonomics so think of the eruptor and heavy machine gun, if these are guns that you like to use then this could be the passive for you. Overall though, the passive is quite niche, it doesn't stand shoulder to shoulder with the likes of Fortified, Medkit or Democracy Protects, but it is a cool idea. I want to go over the cosmetics super quick before I give my overall review. Both armors are so cool, I cannot fault them whatsoever, having skin exposed is a great detail, feeding into that space Vietnam vibe. I will say though that it would be nice if I could pick a skin colour, it's not a big deal and I get the lore of our Helldiver being random every time we redeploy, but I have a weird feeling that there might also be some political correctness involved here, and if I want to be a more tan skin, then that should be fine, and if someone else wants to be white, black or yellow, then that should be fine too. They also added skins for the Pelican, Hellpods and Exosuits, all of these are great, but my only hope is that we're not seeing a hot pink Emancipator Exosuit with bunny ears that shoots candy in 6 months time. Now overall what do I think about this warbond? Arrowhead went a step in the right direction in terms of theming but took two steps back with the actual content. Theming wise everything is near perfect. A fast firing carbine, a secondary shotgun, Rambo-esque throwing knives and all new undergrowth patterns to match perfectly with the jungle themed map Garcrux. Alongside, I'll say it again, amazingly themed armors with big bulging biceps. Oh my god! But when you take a step back and look at the actual content, you've got two less weapons than usual, one of which is a Liberator reskin and not great at the same time, two armor sets instead of three and a throwing knife which is rubbish. The problem with this is the cosmetics which I'm positive about now look like filler in this warband. You're paying the same price as all the other warbonds but getting less usable content and more cosmetics and that's not a good direction to go in in my opinion. I think initially Arrowhead were pumping out warbonds at a pace they could never sustain and this excused the bad balancing with weapons to an extent. They then stated they were going to take more time between each warbond and Viper Commandos was the first taste of that. The theming was done well but where's the rest of the content? You can't take longer and bring out less stuff it doesn't make sense and if you are going to do that you'd want to make sure that it's perfect. Hopefully they learn from this and will deliver on both ends but I'm not sure. I've taken so long with posting this video that the Freedom's Flame Warbond trailer has released and from what I can see we have three weapons which is still one less than usual, one of them is essentially a slugger incendiary, two armor sets, one less than usual, a booster and no grenade, probably due to the weird choice to add an impact incendiary into the Polar Patriots Warbond, 
I mean, there's only so many fire grenades you can do. But yeah, Warbond's decent, content's good, theming is excellent. I'm going to end this video here. If you did enjoy, please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.